Holy smokes, you're not going to believe this, but there is, in fact, a Diddy and Michael Jackson connection. The most recent Hollywood news says that Diddy is panicking after his secrets are being exposed to the public. Some of the news also states that he might be linked to Michael Jackson's career downfall and even his death. One of the conservative commentators, Candace Owens, has begun chattering about her latest statements. She suggested a connection between Diddy's ongoing legal battle and the tragic demise of Michael Jackson. Owens aired her views on her podcast, diving into the intricacies of Diddy's lawsuit and criticizing what she views as media silence on the matter. She alleges a correlation between Diddy's legal entanglements and the enigmatic events surrounding Jackson's death. In her latest podcast episode, Owens outlined five key points from Diddy's lawsuit, hinting that its fallout could surpass that of Epstein's saga. She also vented her concerns on social media, slamming the media's silence on Diddy's legal woes and hinting at potential implications for political and Hollywood bigwigs. The Diddy case might eclipse Epstein's, yet the media's mum, Owens tweeted, dropping a link to her podcast. They're involved, it's grim, but politicians and celebs are under blackmail. Additionally, in her YouTube description, Owens stuck to her guns, alleging a cover-up orchestrated by the media and Tinseltown. She suggests a dark motive to shield VIPs from scrutiny. While Owens' claims stir up debate and doubt, they shine a light on the power dynamics within showbiz and the repercussions of legal scandals involving the elite. Not only did Michael Jackson face career sabotage allegedly from Diddy, but also Hitmaka spilled the tea, claiming Diddy attempted to derail his career on multiple occasions, branding the bad boy mogul as diabolical. Hitmaka talked openly about his professional dealings with Diddy on a recent episode of the Joe Budden podcast. He kicked off by recounting how Diddy initially roped him in for the Love Album, Off The Grid Project. Puff hit me up like, yo, I'm cooking up an R&B album and I need your flavor. It's gonna be me, you, London on Daw Track, the Dream Team. Send me some beats. He reminisced. I sent him a fire 10 track playlist. He hits me back like, I want that young Berg vibe. Stop jocking my style, man. It sounds like you're biting. So I didn't send him anything else. I was like, forget it. The next thing I knew, the dude decoded my tracks, reached out to all my collaborators, and ousted me from the scene. He even summoned Cardiac to his crib, like, join the hitmen. Before I knew it, Eric Bellinger was chilling in the Bahamas with Puff, serenading each other. Hit Maka dropped more bombshells alleging that Diddy had his producer tag erased from French Montana's album, They Got Amnesia. I was like, man, this guy is pure evil, he exclaimed. So I cut ties with him. He also claimed Diddy turned his longtime production partner, Rob Holiday, against him back in the 2000s. Don't miss Hitmaka's tell-all session on the Joe Budden podcast. These revelations about Diddy surface amid rumors of S.A. Most recently, Rodney Jones filed a lawsuit accusing Diddy of assault. It's not looking good for Diddy nowadays because the legal drama surrounding Diddy is escalating, with Lil Rod being the latest to spill the tea. Rodney Lil Rod Jones lent his talents to the Love Album Off The Grid, which hit the scene in September 2023. He poured his heart and soul into it, claiming he took a year off just to grind on the project. Yet, despite burning the midnight oil and swearing off sleep until it was perfect, he claims he was only paid peanuts. What's more, he slammed the contract he signed as appalling. Now, adding fuel to the fire, Lil Rod is slapping Diddy with a lawsuit over publishing rights, adding to the already blazing heap of S.A. misconduct allegations. However, if you are not aware, there's more drama going around as Lil Rod takes matters into his own hands, launching a GoFundMe page to scrape up $50,000 for legal fees. In a jaw-dropping post from The Neighborhood Talk, they unearthed a video capturing Lil Rod and Diddy duking it out over publishing rights. Lil Rod didn't hold back, sharing the clip on his Instagram, only to face a scathing rebuttal from Stevie J, a member of the Bad Boy production crew who essentially branded him a fibber. Diddy's legal eagles echoed Stevie J's sentiments, declaring, we have concrete evidence that his claims are nothing but fibs. They slammed Lil Rod for fishing for an undeserved payout, especially with a previous lawsuit hovering around $30 million. As the story took turns, spectators raised their eyebrows, questioning Lil Rod's credibility. Sounds like a cash grab. It's getting tough to take someone seriously with such grave accusations.
Stay tuned for the next episode of this legal soap opera. So what's your take on Lil Rod's lawsuit against Diddy for publishing on top of the essay allegations? Do you think he's speaking the truth or just chasing a payday? Now, once again, coming back to Michael Jackson's sabotaged career, it wasn't just Diddy who intervened and tried stealing his limelight. With Diddy, there are more Hollywood elites who sabotaged his soaring career. In January 2022, she unveiled the second installment of her documentary series, Janet delving into the emotional and professional repercussions of these accusations on her life. Through her documentary and continued presence in the public eye, Janet Jackson navigates the complexities of fame, family, and personal identity with grace and determination. Had been given to the halftime show sponsor. So Janet says that this is going to be the first and the last time that she ever talks about what happened that day. First of all, I have to ask you this. Was it planned, Janet? No. It was not well, planned. Well, what people don't understand is he was to take and rip the piece off that he did. The leather but, piece. Right, but more came off than what was supposed yeah. to. So he was supposed to pull that off and we just see the red yes. there. And he ripped the whole thing. Yes. So he, he had you practiced or whatever before? Yes, we did. Uh -huh. And so the moment that happened, you immediately covered your breast. Mm -hmm. because you didn't want to be exposed. Mm -hmm. If you'd wanted to be exposed, you wouldn't have covered it. Exactly. Okay. Very embarrassing moment. It was a very embarrassing moment. Yes. Well, 24 hours after that Super Bowl, Janet issued an apology. Uh, and I, I had read some, in another magazine that you regret making that apology. Is that mm -hmm. true? Why? Uh, it was an accident. And management that I had at the time, they thought it was important that I did. Mm -hmm with the project coming out and, and I had said actually before I sat down to to uh, record the apology that I had said to them well, well, what are you apologizing yeah why for? am I apologizing for an accident well you did say in the apology you apologize for anybody who might have been offended by right and, and they wanted me to say that so, so I did they thought it was best that I do so I did while initially riding on the coattails of her famous siblings, Janet quickly established herself as a musical force, leaving an enduring impact on her era. Her influence resonated throughout the music scene, inspiring countless artists, while her distinctive vocals showcased her unmatched talent and charm. However, behind the glamour, Janet Jackson's journey has been far from smooth sailing. From career triumphs to personal setbacks, she has navigated through numerous challenges throughout her illustrious career. The latest segment of her documentary sheds light on some of the recent obstacles she has encountered, including the lingering shadow of accusations against her late brother, the legendary Michael Jackson. In a frank admission, Janet discusses the repercussions of these allegations, including her disillusionment with media figures like Oprah Winfrey, whom she accuses of betrayal and manipulation in their treatment of her brother's legacy. Just recently, there was a story, and I know one of your attorneys held a news conference. There was a story about um, you wanting to have a little white boy play you uh, in, a, in, a, in a Pepsi commercial. That is so stupid. That's the most ridiculous, horrifying story I've ever heard. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, why? Number one, it's my face as a child mm -hmm. in the commercial. Mm -hmm. Me, when I was little. Mm -hmm. Why would I want a white child to play me? I'm a black American. I'm proud to be a black American. I am proud of my race. I am proud of who I am. I have a lot of pride in who I am and dignity. That's like you wanting an oriental person to play you as a child. Does that make sense? No. So please, people, stop believing these okay, Michael, horrifying then, stories. Then let's go to the thing that is most discussed about you, I think, is the fact that the color of your skin is obviously different than it was when you were younger. Yes. And so I think, uh, it has caused a great deal of speculation and controversy as to what you have done or are doing. Are you bleaching your skin? And have, are, is your skin lighter because you don't like being black? Okay, number one, there, as I know of, mm -hmm. there is no such thing as skin bleaching. Mm -hmm. I have never seen it. I don't know what well, it is. Well, they used to have those products growing up. I used to hear, always use bleach and glow, but you'd have okay. to have about 300,000 yeah. gallons. To okay, number it. one, this is the situation. Yes. I have a skin disorder that destroys the pigmentation of the skin is something that I cannot help, okay? But when people make up stories that I don't want to be who I am, it hurts me. So 
It is. When allegations resurfaced about Michael Jackson's alleged improper relationship with a 13-year-old, Janet Jackson faced intense public scrutiny. Despite the backlash, she steadfastly stood by her brother, asserting his innocence while grappling with the weight of guilt by association. The accusations cast a dark shadow over Michael's personal and professional life, impacting not only him but also his family, including Janet. The fallout from the scandal hit close to home for Janet with the loss of a major Coca-Cola sponsor Sponsorship is a stark reminder of the real-world consequences. Despite her familial ties, Janet faced the societal consequences of the claims, which compelled her to strike a careful balance between devotion and accountability. Despite the controversy, Michael's enduring reputation as one of the greatest musicians of all time is undeniable, with his influence extending beyond music, dance, and fashion. Janet Jackson sheds light on a desperate attempt by her brother to settle the allegations by offering a substantial sum to the accuser's family, hoping to quash the charges. However, this move backfired, casting further suspicion on Michael and exacerbating the already tense situation. Yet, amidst the turmoil, the Jackson clan stood resolute, showcasing their unwavering commitment to each other in the face of adversity. In a jaw-dropping revelation, Janet Jackson has leveled serious accusations against Oprah Winfrey, alleging that the talk show titan manipulated her brother, Michael Jackson, into confessing to alleged child abuse on national television. Janet claims that Oprah promised Michael a sympathetic portrayal in the infamous 1993 interview where he admitted to sharing his bed with young boys, only to betray his trust and use the interview to sensationalize and tarnish his reputation for her own gain. This relationship with her deceased brother and the hurdles he encountered in his career. According to Janet, she had long harbored suspicions about Oprah's motives, even cautioning Michael against participating in the interview. She claimed that Oprah's history of sensationalizing celebrities for ratings and purported envy of Michael's achievements fueled her intent to undermine him. In a heated exchange, Janet Jackson didn't mince words when accusing Oprah Winfrey of involvement in the fallout from the contentious documentary, Leaving Neverland. Janet disclosed that after viewing the documentary, which included allegations of sexual misconduct against her late brother, Michael Jackson, she felt compelled to confront Oprah. Janet asserted that Oprah's interviews with the accusers on her show lent credence to their allegations, labeling Oprah as hypocritical and opportunistic. Okay, so are you one of these people who feels guilty because of your success? Yes. You do? I'm, I'm getting better though, a lot better than I just hear. Oh, I know really, I'm thinking, but I'm, I, I'm, I find that very interesting. How did you know that? I don't know, I just sensed it. I, I sensed it, but it's a thing that I never understand because you are successful because of you. Janet painted a portrait of Michael as a kind-hearted and compassionate individual fiercely defending his legacy against what she perceived as false accusations and media bias. Despite his tribulations, Janet emphasized Michael's enduring impact as a beacon of hope and inspiration through his music and philanthropic endeavors. Janet's unwavering love and admiration for her brother shone through as she spoke of her profound grief and the enduring void left by his absence. She expressed pride in Michael's accomplishments and the profound influence he wielded, pledging to uphold his memory and legacy against all odds. As you know, in the iconic 1993 interview at Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch, Oprah Winfrey aimed to provide insight into the enigmatic pop star's life. Yet some fans felt betrayed by the probing nature of her questions. Diving into Jackson's changing appearance, Oprah's inquiry into cosmetic surgery and his admission to a nose job sparked controversy. While Jackson openly discussed his rhinoplasty and disclosed his struggle with vitiligo, Oprah's doubt and insistence on further information left some viewers uncomfortable with the intrusion into his personal life. The interview, aimed at rehabilitating Jackson's public image, instead sparked debate and prompted questions about the limits of journalistic probing into celebrities' private lives. In an open yet contentious moment during the landmark 1993 interview, Oprah Winfrey touched upon Michael Jackson's strained relationship with his father, Joe Jackson, renowned for his strict and reportedly abusive parenting tactics. Michael confessed to enduring physical abuse and hurtful criticism from his father, but also conveyed mixed emotions of affection and a wish to avoid upsetting him. Oprah's probing inquiries about Michael's loyalty and the necessity for therapy to address his trauma struck a chord, underscoring the intricacies of family dynamics 
dynamics and childhood trauma under public scrutiny. Transitioning to a more intimate line of inquiry, Oprah turned her attention to Michael's romantic life, pressing him on whether he was a virgin and his relationship with actress Brooke Shields. While Michael confirmed his courtship with Shields, he demurred on the question of his virginity, citing it as a personal matter and expressing old-fashioned values. Oprah's insinuations and attempts to make Michael feel uncomfortable by implying dishonesty or evasion further fueled speculation and scrutiny of his private affairs. In a controversial segment of the 1993 interview, Oprah Winfrey and other Hollywood elites like Diddy probed Michael Jackson about his friendships with children, questioning the nature of his relationships and insinuating potential impropriety. Jackson defended his interactions with children, attributing them to his longing for a lost childhood and his desire to bring joy to others. However, Oprah and Diddy's line of questioning, particularly her inquiry into whether he ever slept with children in his bed, incited anger among Jackson's loyal fan base. Many criticized Oprah for her perceived disrespect, insensitivity, and bias, contending that her probing of Jackson exploited his vulnerability and harmed his reputation. Some fans even boycotted Oprah's show and demanded an apology, holding her responsible for paving the way for later accusations of sexual abuse against Jackson. In her documentary, Janet Jackson, the 55-year-old star unveils the profound impact of her brother Michael, Jackson's scandal on her career. While they were once close, Janet reveals how their relationship shifted during Michael's peak fame. Providing a rare insight into her personal journey, the control artist reflects on the difficulties of forging her own path while grappling with the shadow of her famous family, especially her idolized brother, Michael. Yet, Janet's vulnerability is laid bare as she witnesses Oprah Winfrey's portrayal of her brother, a departure from the admired figure she once knew. Janet mourns Oprah's use of Michael's image for ratings, feeling betrayed by both her brother and the media mogul. We had a studio at home and I would go in there and watch my brothers rehearse all the time. Everything I could, I would try to be in the middle of my brothers, Janet recalled. We always had fun and I loved being around them. So when they had to work and travel, I missed them. I just felt like an outcast. Where do I fit in? It was also alleged that Diddy used Michael Jackson to get back with his girlfriend. The news of the music icon's breakup with his girlfriend of 11 years resurfaced just last week, and now Diddy is pulling out all the stops to show he's still head over heels for her. How? Well, he's turning to Michael Jackson's love songs because, why not? Taking to social media, Diddy urged anyone who crosses paths with Cassie this weekend to make sure she listens to The Lady in My Life a whopping 100 times. Alongside a screenshot of the track from MJ's legendary thriller album, Diddy penned, if anyone sees Cassie this weekend, please tell her to listen to this song 100 times. And if you're wondering why, just take a listen to the lyrics where it says, and baby through the years, even when we're old and gray, I will love you more each day, cause you will always be the lady in my life. Speculation is going around as Diddy hints at a possible reconciliation with his ex, Cassie, through the lens of Michael Jackson's iconic 1982 track, where the late singer yearns for a second chance with his lost love. Reports from The Shade Room suggest the hip-hop power couple called it quits long before we even knew. Cassie, focusing on her music and acting, previously fueled up a new flame with model Jocelyn after sightings in Miami and a joint attendance at a Drake concert, Her Love Be Scott. Jocelyn, known for her diverse heritage and modeling gigs, adds fuel to the gossip mill. During his previous breakup scene, Diddy was caught in June with a mystery brunette leaving a hotel, yet was seen with Cassie as recently as September. Speculation about the couple's engagement was rampant, but Diddy quashed marriage rumors in 2015, expressing a preference for a love contract over walking down the aisle. Speaking on Watch What Happens Live, he emphasized the weight of responsibility in such a commitment, hinting at undisclosed claims made by Cassie. Fast forward to November, and Cassie, also known as Cassandra Ventura, filed a lawsuit against Combs, alleging S.A. and trafficking. The suit, detailed by the New York Times, paints a harrowing picture of abuse spanning years, including physical violence and coercion into sexual encounters with others, all under the threat of career sabotage. Shockingly, the suit claims Combs even threatened to destroy rapper Kid Cootie's car over his relationship with Cassie, an incident confirmed by Kid Cootie's spokesperson. What was once 
once envisioned as a fairy tale romance, with Diddy nudging Michael Jackson aside for the spotlight, now appears to be unraveling as the truth about Diddy comes to light. Amid ongoing speculation about an orchestrated agenda targeting Michael Jackson for alleged child abuse, Janet Jackson insists it's the handiwork of influential Hollywood figures plotting against him, a claim still unproven. The impact of Diddy's actions on Jackson, devoid of any regret, becomes painfully evident. Rabbi Shmuley's bond with Michael Jackson began in 1999, evolving into recorded conversations a year later when Jackson was 42. Despite their contrasting backgrounds, the Orthodox rabbi became a trusted confidant and spiritual mentor to the King of Pop. According to Rabbi Shmuley, Jackson shattered the public's perception of him as eccentric, revealing his authentic self without pretense. When questioned about his connection to Jackson, the rabbi recounted witnessing profound anguish, deep regret, and remorse, especially in the aftermath of the 1993 essay allegations. Struggling to cope with the aftermath, Jackson sought redemption by reclaiming his narrative and sharing his truth with the world. In a revealing glimpse behind the curtain, Rabbi Shmuley sheds light on Michael Jackson's desire to shed his public persona and be seen as his authentic self. During the nine-month period of recorded conversations, Rabbi Shmuley and Jackson grew so close that the rabbi considered him a part of the family. Fond recollections endure, such as Friday evenings spent in Englewood, New Jersey, where Jackson frequented the rabbi's home for Sabbath dinner, often accompanied by his children, Prince and Paris, as well as his security team. These close-knit gatherings held special significance for Jackson. In these moments of laughter and companionship, he found comfort and happiness in life's simple joys. Despite the public scrutiny and conjecture surrounding his unorthodox approach to parenting, the recordings unveil a gentle aspect of Jackson as a dedicated father a departure from the sensationalized portrayal depicted in the media. As the drama intensifies, Diddy finds himself at the center of this controversy, where he is apparently sabotaged, this time linked to Michael Jackson's legacy. Amidst the intense drama, what truths will come to light and how will they shape Diddy's future in the spotlight?